Um, I wanted to um, speak about three examples of campaigning and political work um, and talk about why I think they are, these, these sorts of tactics are crucial in getting our message out and in defending sex, secularism, it sounded like sex, defending secularism and also, <laughs> it's too early, and also empowering women. <clears throat> Um, and I want to give the three examples I want to give is the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, FITNA, which is a movement, a new movement for women's liberation, and uh, nude protest and topless activism. And I'm sorry I have no slides for you. Um, well, on, on apostasy, on the issue of apostasy, I, I started an organization with uh, 25 other people in 2007 uh, called the Council of Ex-Muslims. And the idea behind it is that your religion, uh, your atheism is your business, it's nobody's business. But if you're going to threaten me for being an atheist, if you're going to kill people for apostasy in over 11 countries across the world and consider it a prosecutable offense in nearly 30, then it's no longer a personal matter. You're going to be challenged, you're going to face resistance, and it's going to be a public resistance. Um, and, and in that sense, uh, the Council of Ex-Muslims uh, came about to say that, um, you know, we're not going to leave Islam quietly. We're going to do it publicly, both in order to show the many people who are in the closet that it's a possibility to do so, to break the taboo of leaving Islam, and to challenge Islamism head on. Um, and in a sense, you know, we're told, well, you know, why do you have to be so offensive? Why can't you just leave Islam and remain quiet about it? Well, yeah, stop killing us and then we'll remain quiet about it. We won't need to worry about it anymore. Um, you know, you're being unnecessarily provocative. We're definitely being provocative, but I think that's the point of many political campaigns. But it's not unnecessary. It's, it's a very necessary thing to do. Um, so, this is, um, this is just one example of political and campaigning work. You know, we're, we're, we, we often see in this day and age uh, a lot of appeasement, a lot of tiptoeing around, a lot of um, toleration of the intolerable. And I think something like the Council of Ex-Muslims, which is in your face, we are apostates, we are proud to be apostates, apostasy is our right. Um, it, it is an important challenge, a very necessary challenge to one of the barbarisms of our era. Fitna is another very good example. It's a new movement we've started. It's called Fitna Movement for Women's Liberation. And the reason we've called our, ourselves Fitna is because in one of the hadiths of, the, of Muhammad, Islam's prophet, um, it says that I have left behind no fitna more harmful to men than women. That's us here. <laughs> and of course, this is a recurring theme in all religions. Um, but uh, and in, in practice, you see this obsession with uh, women, restricting women uh, from, uh, you know, and blaming her for everything from family honors, you know, the violation of family honor, to chaos and soci in, in, in society. Fitna means being a source of chaos, a source of affliction. Um, and that's why women have to be veiled. So for those who defend the veil, um, thank you very much, but we don't consider ourselves a source of chaos and affliction. And, and so in that sense, um, it's, it's sort of, and this is something we've done with the Council of Ex-Muslims as well, turning a term that's deemed negative, uh, you know, apostate, it's, it's de derogatory, turning it into something positive and making people feel proud to be apostates. And we're doing this with fitna as well. We're t you think it's a negative term, but you're labeling any woman that transgresses your filthy norms, your vile norms. Uh, you're um, labeling women who are unveiled, labeling women who dare to speak, labeling women who dare to act, labeling women who dare to demand equality and freedom, sources of fitna. So in fact, being a source of fitna is a really good thing. And in a sense, we are a source of fitna and affliction, but for Islamism and for religious misogyny and reaction. Um, and you know, it's interesting because I think it is an important move because um, to be a woman is the greatest of humiliations under Islamic law. Just to give you an example, 
recently there was uh, some young men who were, um, uh, as their punishment for a crime that they had committed um, in Iran, they were dressed as women and in a veil and paraded around the city because t nothing could humiliate them more than dressing them up as women. And so there's, there's a huge protest movement in Iran and abroad with men dressing up as women, saying there, there is no humiliation to be a woman. So it's this sort of challenging, uh, this whole concept of us being a source of affliction to one saying, yes, we are a, a source of affliction on you. Uh, and that's why, it, it is so, that's why uh, religion and Islamism is so obsessed with women. The final example I want to give you is nude protest. Um, uh, I organized a nude calendar in support of Alia Magda El Mahdi, who's an Egyptian atheist, um, a young woman who posted a nude photo of herself um, in protest against misogyny and hypocrisy and Islamism. And uh, she faced, uh, of course, a lot of support across the world, but also huge numbers of attacks. And so uh, we, we did a calendar to defend her. Um, and also recently there's Amina Taylor, she's a 19-year-old um, uh, a Tunisian feminine activist, a topless activist, who um, posted a photo of herself saying, in Arabic, saying, my body is not the source of anyone's honor, and another one saying, fuck your morals. And she is now in prison, facing six to 12 years imprisonment. Um, and so uh, we organized an international day in her defense. Now, um, I, I think I know uh, there's, there's a lot of controversy over new protests, particularly given the way women's bodies are commodified. Uh, but I think particularly for those of us who are facing Islamism, uh, you know, a movement that considers you to be half that of a man, it considers you, it, it demands that you be bound, to be gagged, to be veiled, to be invisible. Uh, in, in, when faced with that movement, nudity for many of us becomes an important form of resistance and dissent as well as showing solidarity with the likes of Alia Magda al Mahdi or um, Amina. And in a sense, nudity is the antithesis of veiling. Um, it's not obviously the only way to resist Islamism. I've mentioned two others, Fitna and Council of Ex-Muslims. But it's a very modern and practical way of, uh, of opposing uh, Islamism. They want us covered up. We refuse, we refuse to comply. Um, and, you know, I think, in a sense, uh, very often, you know, the, the view religion has of the female body is very similar to the pornographic view of women's body. It's a body, um, you know, without humanity, without thoughts, without feelings. And, you know, so, in a sense, taking and owning a tool that's used for the repression of women, uh, using it as a form of resistance and dissent can be very empowering and important. Um, you know, we we've been accused of doing, you know, being, you know, using nudity to shock. Yes, of course, that that's our purpose. The Council of Ex-Muslims, uh, fitna, nudity is a we we want to shock. We want to outrage. Very many fundamental changes that have taken place throughout history has been by shocking and outraging existing sensibilities at the time. Um, you know, we are accused of shaking the very moral foundations of society. Exactly, that's our point. Um, in the fine words of Amina, uh, my body belongs to me and is not the source of anyone's honor and fuck your morals. Um, but and just to give you a sort of, I guess some bullet points of what I think is important in campaigning work and hugely important for secularism. And, and Rachel mentioned it, you know, defying the laws, defying the status quo, defying uh, what is so unfair and unjust. Uh, it, it is important for activists to do it. Many activists before us did it as well. Um, pragmatism is not going to change the world. It's not. Um, and challenging misogyny head on no tiptoeing, no appeasement, no toleration for that which is intolerant. That is the job of political campaigning and activists. Um, using derogatory words, turning it on their head, and giving it a new meaning. Uh, you know, 
five years ago, six years ago now, when I started the Council of Ex-Muslims, uh, I was surprised really at the fear ex-Muslims have to come out and speak. People who were born in Britain and raised in Britain. And because I come from a tradition of left fighting for decades against the Iranian regime, I had never seen that sort of fear. And to see it in a country that's safe, I found heinous and just atrocious. And six years now, I, I can't believe the numbers of ex-Muslims who are out there. Uh, it's a different world, and I think uh, even in a very short period, these tactics, breaking taboos, uh, challenging things head on, shocking, offending, does have an important place and can make fundamental changes. I also, um, at breaking taboos, shaking the very foundations of societies, pushing boundaries. I think that's our job, pushing boundaries, pushing them as far as we can. Uh, demanding the unthinkable. You know, um, the Uruguayan poet Eduardo Galeano says that dreaming is a human right. It really is. You know, to think big, to dream the impossible. That is what people who oppose slavery did. That is what people who oppose sex uh, a racial um, segregation have done against racial apartheid. It seemed impossible to, to, um, to challenge, but it, it was made possible by people who pushed the boundaries, who dared to dream. Um, I'm often told I need to be pragmatism. Fuck pragmatism. Seriously, pragmatism does not change the world, but we as, as activists and political campaigners intend to. And I think for secularists, we need to have that, we need to be on the offensive. We are not on the offensive. Uh, Islamists, the religious right, they are. And as I mentioned yesterday, the times are changing, and it is now our time to be on the offensive. So let's do it. Thank you. Thank you.